They didn't think we could do it. They didn't think we could bring another show in another day. They doubted. They said not those guys. They said who? Those bums? They can't do it. They're talking about you, Mo. Hey. Or maybe Will. I don't know. Probably me. Probably. But I took one look at this chair right here and I said, Not today! I said, what do you boys need? Some Tim Hortons or what? Yeah. Mo said, I'll take a regular. Will Do said, I'll take a dark roast black. I said, I can handle that. We yeah. get back over here. Will Do has six heart attacks prior to, <laughs> prior to <laughs> hitting the button, <laughs> which it just seems to be the theme right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just frazzled. Like, hey, guys, you want to see my heart rate? <laughs> frazzled. <laughs> I'll show you. I like frazzled producer Will. It's a beautiful character. Uh, but there's just so much going on and we just couldn't leave it out. Plus, I'm going to be gone for a bit. Uh, this is our last show until Monday, believe it or not. So we got a lot packed in today, including an exclusive interview. Uh, I don't know. Should I tell them now who it is with or should we should that be a teaser? No, tell them. Should that be a cliff, a little cliffhanger um, uh, early show? cliffhanger for okay. later in the show we got a big interview all right and not not anything i expected to have happen so don't go anywhere keep it locked first story of the day though is about facebook facebook making a lot of news today they reported a little dip in the user base mm. and uh, as, a, as a result you see a little dip in the uh what what do you call it well market cap there you go market <laughs> cap so apparently there were like was like 10 billion wiped off although I don't know look at this it looks pretty flat oh there it is yeah that's the wipe off oh that's the one right there so 323 all the way down to you know uh, 241 244 so it took a it's pretty steep when you got the 5 day it looks real steep mm -hmm. uh there's a couple of different uh, um uh reasons potential reasons for this dip in you in the user base uh, Zuckerberg had his own, he had his own uh, excuses. I don't want to say excuse. I mean, <laughs> it's a busy guy. <laughs> he's got a lot going on. Um, we got Facebook, Instagram, Meta. He's Mister VR. He's Mister Metaverse. Uh, he's Mister Oculus, or yeah. what? What was give formerly him a break, okay. Oculus? I don't think anyone wants to give him a break. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll give him a break. Um, what else does he have? Oh, WhatsApp. It's a lot of stuff you're managing there, although I'm sure there's plenty of talented people in there as well. But uh, so here's some of the things that Facebook said is uh, impacting its, um, I guess it's profits, it's uh, sales. Um, oh, actually, look at this. The 10 billion is not market cap. That's uh, that, that they, the market cap obviously did go down as well. But the 10 billion is in direct relationship to Apple. This is a thing that Mark is very upset about. So Facebook said Wednesday that Apple's app tracking transparency feature would decrease the company's, this is forecasting, 2022 sales by about 10 billion. So there's your 10 billion that you're, that you're looking for. Hmm. I guess we could do the math on the market cap. You need to know how many shares there are, or we could just, we could leave it at that. We could leave it at sure, that. Sure, yeah. The stock price dipped. And therefore, some of the value dipped, and therefore, some of the wealth dipped. Could be temporary, could be permanent. Uh, but the Apple side of it is pretty interesting. So this is Tim Cook getting the last laugh over here. I remember when this thing first came into play, there was some talk about how uh, this was going to hurt Facebook's business, but also potentially, and this was the case that Facebook was attempting to make, that it would hurt the businesses that utilize Facebook's data Data on customers they advertise to 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 effectively run. So all those little Instagram ads that you see and so forth that know so much about you and are so beautifully targeted. Great ads. There you go. See? Yeah. A little respect for the ads. But to get the right ad served to you, in many cases, uh, the advertiser needs to know about you, right? Like any good relationship will. Mm -hmm. You got to know about who you're in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. The advertiser loves you. <laughs> the advertiser has a tremendous amount of upside in terms of getting to know you. The advertiser um, has one objective, Will. 
to make you like them to, or to make you believe that they have the answer to all your problems. That's how it works. Mm. Anyway, so getting to know you is a big part of it. And Facebook can't get to know you the way it used to because of this transparency feature on iOS. They relied heavily on the iOS user base to uh, interact with these ads and therefore buy these products. And therefore, Facebook gets their percentage, their piece on those ad sales. Well, with the privacy feature and people essentially having to opt in, getting the prompt and having to decide whether or not they're willing to opt in, it, it just means that a lot of customers don't. And all of a sudden, these targeted ads and such affect the bottom line. And I guess that's a forecast for 2022 that it's going to affect them to the extent of $10 billion trying to prepare this variety of analysts that would track such things so they don't get their hopes up too much for growth within the company, of course, Meta, the parent company now of Facebook, is increasingly diversified and looking to make money in other places as well. So moving away from a strictly advertising model mm -hmm. with their new identity. Now, another blame that Zuckerberg threw out there was uh, TikTok. You ever heard of TikTok, Will? Yeah. Mm. I don't mind them. All right. Okay. So this is more to do with user decline on a Facebook platform, CEO Mark Zuckerberg believes Facebook's decline in users is likely due to the boom in popularity of, of the competitor platform, TikTok. Important to note, this is the first time ever, actually, that Facebook shows a decline in users. That's a long hmm. history wow. of growth. So to see a dip there, oh, 200 billion is the number off the value. So that's, I mean, even, even bigger number far as market cap now that we're back into the market i had them i had them flip flopped yeah they were in reverse so the market cap dip was even bigger than the 10 billion i talked about apple's just responsible for that 10 billion mm -hmm. this is many more billions and, and, and in fact it's it's a handful of billions for mark himself because he's got so much of this stock himself so that 200 billion dollar market cap dip personally affects him to the tune of 29 billion mm. So that's his uh, net worth. I don't think he's too bothered or worried about no. it. Maybe it's not the ideal day. Yeah, he'll bounce back I feel like with a couple more billions. I feel like Zuckerberg's going to be around. Mm -hmm. uh, weren't you in his metaverse recently? That sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was. Uh, yeah. Horizon. Yeah. Did he smoke some meats for you? He showed up and... Facebook let's reported, let's just end it there. Facebook reported a drop of nearly 500,000 in daily logins during the last three months of 2021. He says, people have a lot of choice, have a lot of choices for how they want to spend their time and apps like TikTok are growing very quickly. Zuckerberg said during an earnings call. It's funny the way he says that. People have a lot of choices for how they want to spend their time. Mm -hmm. But of course he means Facebook competitors. He doesn't mean like the real world. Sure, yeah. He's not like, uh, they people are going for a lot of hikes. <laughs> He's like, people have a lot of choices for other apps that they want to shove in front of their faces, including the likes of TikTok. He reiterated that Meta, the company that owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, is pushing hard to develop its short-form video reels in an effort to compete with TikTok. This is why our focus on reels is so important over the long term. Facebook, which now has only... 1.93 billion users logging in each day only. Mm. Only. Uh, also, sides shares plunge by more than 20%. Yeah, I like I said, all this meta talk and VR and uh, I mean, you still got WhatsApp and Instagrams. So people still seem to like. I mean, you got, it's just so many reels though. There's reels over here. There's shorts over there. Reels over there. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just staggering how much... Um meta owns the internet Ooh, like different softwares and meta, apps and all meta that net. stuff meta, yeah meta net oh it's scary what's the one in uh skynet there you go mm -hmm. what what am i talking about terminator terminator yeah terminator yeah well so whatever shout out mark shout out facebook shout out tim you guys can uh have a celebrity boxing match if, nice. need, if need be um, probably sell a few paper views. You can oh, make yeah. up. You can make up to twenty nine billion or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. How much would they make off that? I know we love the oh. idea of these things, but you they can make 
a hundred dollars. No, two hundred bucks a person. No, a thousand dollars. Oh a my person. god! <laughs> Willie, D promoter, he just saying no. <laughs> Pro promoter <laughs> Willie, do he went from yeah. the high heart rate to full confidence? He pounds the table. One thousand dollars <laughs> per pay per view, and the whole world buys it. Yeah, I think everyone would pay for that. Yeah, so. Anyway, yeah, Facebook lost the daily users, and uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm not a daily active user on Facebook. I know a lot of people are, uh, but it's been a transition period for sure, and uh, the name change and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Apple makes progress in India as iPhone sales rise 34 percent to record, new record, I presume. Apple had the highest revenue in India. Counterpoint estimates. Xiaomi, Samsung led the market in number of smartphones sold. Ah, yes. Well, this makes sense. Uh, when we're talking about revenue, we're talking about the total dollar figure units moved and uh, as opposed to units moved. And when it comes to the premium market, we know that Apple dominates. So I'm not surprised by that. Uh, but that is a big deal for them because they were trying to figure out, you know, the India strategy. Um, they moved the production over there. And I believe they recently opened their first retail store, but the mm. online stuff had been around and they had been working on promoting it. Apple Inc. had its strongest quarter for iPhone sales in India yet, a sign that the company is finally making progress in the world's fastest growing smartphone market. Sales increased to 2.3 million units in the fourth quarter, which is up 34% from a year earlier, according to numbers from the market research firm CounterPoint, China Xiaomi Corp. and South Korea Samsung Electronics sold 9.3 million and 7.2 million. So the majority of the market in India is still not the Apple price tag, right? Which mm -hmm. is important to note. So you have, even though they, they were able to capture all that revenue on 2 million units where uh, Xiaomi and Samsung collectively, I mean, they were looking at close to 20 million units, mm -hmm. but at different price points. These are both companies that have many options in the budget area the more value type of area. Uh, Apple's privacy measures are going to cut. Oh, we, we already covered this one. Oh, yeah. Ten, that's the 10 billion number. <laughs> Apple has created a smart sunroof that lets you decide how much light you want inside. This looks like a patent filing. It's been a while since we've had one of those on the show. Wouldn't you say, Will? Uh, Good old-fashioned patent. I like it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. While Apple has remained completely tight-lipped about it, everybody knows the company is working on an Apple car. Apple car. You like you like tight-lipped? I've just never heard that before. You, so you like. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Apple car thing. I guess we haven't... It's tough with the Apple car because they're just so secretive and everyone knows they probably are... You look at the the hiring and the job listings and all these Tesla people working and you're like, wait, mm -hmm. wait a second. What's that all about? And every so every so often we see one of these things right here, which is, uh, like I said, a patent filing of sorts or some sort of patent drawing. And we all try to imagine what this Apple car would be like, the types of features it could have that we haven't seen before. Uh, this could be one of those features, and Willie Do likes it. I like it because there's not a lot of roof tech in cars. Yeah. There needs to be more. Big roof tech guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Put some effort you, in some. Roof well, what about tech? roof tech in general? Not even just cars, just roof tech. Oh yeah, everything's outdated yeah. now that I think about it. Yeah, roof. But, uh, Didn't Elon do something with the? Talk uh, about Elon. Solar, solar panel. roof. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you can't get it. It's they oh. can't make it <laughs> okay. fast enough. And I was trying to get in touch with them for years over that stuff. I know I'm in Canada, which makes it more complicated. But uh, installing and mm -hmm. it's just tough. All right, right. roof tech. Yeah. It's a tough time. Plus, over here is not the most optimal uh, spot for mm -hmm. solar because of... I don't know if you've been outside today. No. <laughs> no, 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 Yeah, you get that snow. I guess it would... Oh, snow. I guess you know that it's a glass roof now. The Apple car is going to have a glass roof. As an option, at least. Yeah. If, But again, hey, sometimes... Hey. Sometimes <laughs> they just do stuff like this in case they want to make it one day. Yeah. It's oh, not even part of a, yeah. a, a product that's immediately in development. Sometimes they want to patent something just so no one else does it. Mm -hmm. okay. What do they call that? Patent trolling? Is that the name of that? Uh-huh. I don't know. 
Uh, in addition to ongoing talks with very par various parties involved in the automotive industry, Apple is also working around the clock developing new technology that one day could make its way into the ambitious self-driving EV. Most recently, the iPhone maker has patented a new sunroof design whose purpose would be to make it possible for drivers to decide just how much light they want inside, which is sort of like, uh, I mean, often if you have a glass roof, you would have one of those units, like in an SUV, it comes across like a shade mm -hmm. and blocks the glass roof if you don't want it. But in a car like this with a sloping roof line and... Mm -hmm. Do you ever see when people have the windows that they hit a button and then it goes opaque, like private? Yeah. No. I think... The um, glass? The most recent Speedtail has it. Has the this one or the... They or what tint, I said? Yeah, it's like electromagnetic. I don't know the technology, but it tints the glass. It's lovely. I think you can imagine, and I'm sure it's expensive, but in a residential setting, instead of blinds, you just hit the button, the yeah. window turns off or on. Uh, this was a story that you you uh, brought to light, put in put in front of me here. Silenced air tags with disabled speakers are now popping up for sale online, Whoa. and it, well, it's, a, it's a, obviously a creepy thing. We've talked a couple times now. Well, all the way back to the launch of the air tags, and then more recently development where uh, law enforcement was actually discovering these things being used in high-end vehicle thefts and stalking well we also talked about that how there was some sort of a review going on about a legal procedure around these types of devices mm -hmm. and now you see this happen you're like oh my god this thing must be so widespread you give people the technology they do what they do mm -hmm. but it's weird the technology's been there forever like tile's been doing it for you're right so long but as soon as they they come out everyone starts stealing cars and shit I mean, well, I mean, I think people, I think people were always stealing cars, right? But using this <laughs> but method, I, I just think that what happens often when Apple does something, the way that their footprint works, like, like there were MP3 players before the iPod, right? Uh, there were smartphones before that. It just brings it to a whole new group of people because their marketing and distribution network is so vast that all of a sudden a bunch of people who never even thought about tracking anything were like, oh, that's a thing I can do. Yeah, Apple becomes their entry point because of how vast their reach happens to be and the communication around the company. Mm. Um, Scale and easy to use, that's their... Sure. Yeah, yeah. and anyway, th this, it's, it's, it seems pretty obvious at this point that these things are being used for nefarious reasons. And one of the ways that it can get worse is by disabling the alert speaker in there. Right. So here you have an Etsy seller. Oh, I guess it recently got taken down. Yes, it was taken down, although I feel like it should still be up, mainly because um, obviously this this intention is very, like, focused, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is a weirdo that's going to buy this from this Etsy store. Okay, can, Maybe, I just, can I just play the other side? Is it possible that as a regular user, you would just want one without a speaker? No, that, no, no, no. It's not possible? There's no advantage no. to that? I mean, what's the Why? use case? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure the way we talk about this is that, right. like, maybe this person, maybe this wasn't a thing that was in, uh, just strictly for crime. But then again, like, Apple would allow you to disable it if you choose to, but they didn't, right? There's a reason why it's not disabled. Yeah, but this is not that complicated to pop the thing open and detach the speaker. Yeah. Like, anyone can do it. Which is the weird part. But granted, I think probably a lot of people don't want to do it, and and this person's probably charging a small fee for doing so. I think authorities should take this uh, seller over and, you know... See who buys them. Yeah. And then follow them around. Yeah. And then put air oh, tags on those trap. people. Uh -huh, yeah. You're talking about tracking the trackers. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're talking about who watches the watchmen. Uh, okay, well, listen. For, the, for those that don't know, the beeping, the audible beep is important because... It alerts somebody who's nearby an air tag that doesn't belong to them. It alerts them that uh, they one. have an unknown air yeah. tag. Yeah. So that's why uh, somebody who was doing some criminal activity would not want it to be making any noise. Mm -hmm. The audible beep is gone. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know how Apple Apple would have to engineer a product that if the speaker was detached, then the product died completely. Oh, self destruct good thinking. Yeah, like that's, that's a, it it doesn't function at all the speaker mm -hmm. is necessary if it's tampered with for exactly yeah. anti tamper cool. something like that but 
This is going to go on, man. We're going to keep hearing about this, no doubt. Oh, look, the person was selling it for seventy-seven fifty for a silent air tag. That's a premium. That's right. quite a little premium right there. How much does one go for right now? They're like fifty bucks, I think. Oh, okay. Am I right, Will? No, it's cheaper. Right? Thirty bucks. Around there. Are we talking Canadian? We talking USD? I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, either way, they're putting a premium on there for their. Uh, for the little surgery they're doing on it. Mm -hmm. uh, in a win for crypto stakers, the IRS offers a refund on untraded token rewards. Well, this sounds like a Willie Do story right here. That's a deep crypto. Talking about staking. Are you staking or what? Uh, I do stake. Oh, yeah. my goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> I stake a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, we the way that you were talking about that a Gucci AirPods case yesterday or two days ago. Mm. Uh, I was pretty sure you were staking the way you were talking about that. Uh, yeah, I like, I'll sound, stake that too. I was like, that sounds like a guy that's staking the way he's floating these ideas of purchasing $800 headphone cases. Mm -hmm. Strike me as a crypto type in that moment. Kirk really wants them. But does he really though? I feel like he does. The, the Gucci bag you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, good Lord. I can see him. A yeah, decision <laughs> to refund a Nashville couple taxes related to unsold Tezos tokens is set to clarify the IRS tax treatment of staked cryptocurrency. In a win for cryptocurrency stakers and miners, the IRS has offered to refund the couple paid ta taxes paid on rewards gained, but not redeemed from staking on the Tezos blockchain. Okay, so what they're saying is if you haven't redeemed it, in other words, I guess they mean turned it back into USD. Yeah, if then you keep staking it. It's not taxed yet Yeah. until it becomes um, converted or what, well, whatever word they were using, redeemed. Mm -hmm. It's an odd word to use, but I suppose... Like a coupon. I know, it sure sounds like a coupon. You know what? Immediately, I had a flash of being in one of those kids' playground type things where you get the tokens or the tickets, mm. and then you got to go redeem it for a prize. Oh, mm. like uh, Dave and Buster. Yeah, or, like the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, when I hear redeemed, that's where my mind goes. I gotta go redeem these tokens or tickets. <laughs> is that word satisfying to you? Yes. It is, right? It's I agree. Redeemed, redemption. Yeah. Uh, what's that movie? And then you go and completely redeem yourself. No? Okay. Somebody in the comments. Somebody in the, in the chat. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's really not important. GameStop. Loving the NFT talk. Remember, we were saying mm. uh, it's the fan base, and they're trying to connect the dots here as far as uh, becoming a Web3 company. Yeah. You, are you still into the Web3 thing yourself? That's I feel cool. like it's inevitable. Okay. All right. That's Will's point. Mm. GameStop taps Immutable X for NFT Marketplace and launches a $100 million gaming fund the retail gaming stable is taking a carbon neutral swing at web 3 with no shortage of bankroll so they got money uh they're 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 hanging in there like this uh what what is it wall street bets community mm -hmm. apes the apes have Moon. have um they have uh consolidated fortified this, oh, okay. this company and with an enclave Maybe yeah. that might Solid be right. Solid enclave. Um, and and now you're looking for diversification, a way to hang around into the next generation. And really, it seems like all options are on the table for this company. The gaming retail giant said Thursday it tapped the two layer, uh, sorry, the layer two system to be used atop Ethereum because of immutable zero gas fees for trading and minting NFTs in a carbon neutral environment. GameStop's plans for its marketplace to include billions of low-cost in-game assets that can easily be bought and sold. It's like an eBay of NFTs. Mm -hmm. You're laughing. Go ahead. For some reason, like this term, like we all understand it now, but it sounds so foreign maybe like a year ago. Oh, right. Right. Zero gas fees. Carbon neutral environment. It starts even earlier minting than that. Yeah. NFTs. All you need is like this. <laughs> layer 2 system. Ethereum, yeah. <laughs> immutable, zero gas, mint, NFT, carbon neutral. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and then at the very end, non-fungible tokens. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. 
It's a lot of words, man, that uh, everybody's into right now. Oh, man. Anyway, you can see what they're, um, they're taking submissions, I believe, right now. I don't know if you left that page open or not, or did you close it? Which one? The, the actual web page, which will be the home for their... Oh, there we go. Yeah. So Immutable X, GameStop, NFT, they're doing a $100 million, uh, grant program. We seek to fund game changers. We are calling on builders and creators to power the future of Web3 gaming, apply for grant consideration. So they're handing out $100 million bucks. Uh, if you want to get involved, you can head over to their website, uh, GameStop NFT. Oh, sorry. Yeah, GameStop NFT.typeform.com. And there's an apply button right there. So you can uh, get, in, get involved. If you go back to the Reddit post there, the one in the middle, uh, it looks like GameStop is planning for $3 billion plus in primary and secondary sales via, via their NFT marketplace. Oh, my God. So huge projections over there on uh, what they expect to be able to generate. Um, what are, these are the milestones. So I guess this is kind of like a projection. The grant will be distributed in such portions on condition of each of the milestones being met to the reasonable satisfaction of digital worlds in good faith. This is, well, we got the legal type of terminology in there. Hmm. But uh, they everybody wants a piece of this NFT thing, including GameStop. And GameStop seems to be one company that has such a, unlike the game developers themselves, the fans of GameStop seem to provide insulation. They seem to provide uh, a tremendous amount of flexibility for the company. Yeah, there's no friction there. It's you can weird. do anything there. I mean, because they're investors. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, they plan to they plan to, for this thing to produce billions in, in just a couple of years. Good luck. Yeah. Spotify CEO uh, defends Joe Rogan deal in a tense company town hall. Well, he actually this is like an internal thing that uh, the Verge got their hands on this dialogue. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's been taking pressure internally because the obviously you're aware that there's been petitions and employees that are not Joe Rogan fans and external pressure from artists that are on Spotify. And it's really interesting to see him try to kind of put the fires out and uh, get everybody back on board as far as the team is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, some interesting things that I found inside of this. Uh, it's a pretty long message, actually. I don't know if it's trans trans code transcribed like i don't know if it was originally audio and then mm -hmm. put into but anyway the essentially what he said was spotify is a platform and we have our rules but ultimately the way that artists express themselves on on our platform is up to them within this rule set unlike say a production company that owns an asset and mm -hmm. is therefore involved in the editorial uh, um, part of the production. So they're saying they're just the platform. And, and this is where it gets a little squirrely. So they're saying when we have an independent artist, in the case of Joe Rogan, or in the case of any other podcaster for that matter, I'm trying to think of some other ones right now. Ben Simmons? Uh, D Dax Shepard. Armchair I think, expert. I think is who he named as yeah. another. I'm trying to think of exclusive ones on Spotify. Yeah, armchair expert. He's exclusive. Shepard. He's exclusive yeah. on Spotify. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they're saying that those ones get treated in the sense that Spotify's a platform. Here's another thing to mention. Well, we put this show on Spotify, so it is true in that sense. We have no relationship with them. Mm -hmm. I don't even think we earn revenue at the moment mm -mm. from putting it there. None. Easy. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah. Will wants uh, staking benefits over here. Yeah. Can you do that? Please? Um, so it is true in that sense that it, it, people, regular people who want to do an audio show, can use Spotify as a platform. Where there's a discrepancy here is that, well, for one, Spotify did not give us $100 million. And so many people think, hey, you paid him $100 million. I saw the headline. We want you to take more responsibility for his viewpoint. Well, to that, the CEO of Spotify said, I don't agree with everything that he says. I don't like a lot of the things that he says. He says that he's not like we're best pals or whatever. However, 
we have our rule set and he walks a fine line. Speaking of Rogan, CEO speaking of Spotify, speaking on Rogan, he says he walks a fine line. Sometimes he goes over, sometimes he doesn't. And he even goes on to say that some episodes have been taken down. Now you may remember when the show first went to Spotify, there were some episodes that were missing. Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones is pretty one of those episodes. Pretty obvious one. I think there were others. But anyway, he's, he basically says, like, we're keeping an eye. Now, this is the, the big difference, though. At the time, or just prior to Spotify doing a $100 million deal with Rogan, they also purchased a number of production companies, which were podcast producers, including Gimlet and The Ringer. Hmm. Um, now, in those cases, they say, we aren't the platform. In those cases, since we bought those properties... We actually are the production. We are the product. And in that, in, in that case, when it comes to editorial, you can kind of criticize us to a certain extent, I suppose, with what goes out on those uh, shows that are owned by us. So it is a difference. In the case of Rogan, they don't own the show. They don't produce the show they, either. No, but, but ownership is important. They license right. the show from Joe on a contract. And they pay him $100 million for that, but all ownership and equity in the show belongs to Joe and if he has any other investors or anything like that. So anyway, you can read through it if you want to look at it in some more detail. But there, I mean, it's like everything in life. There's always more nuance than the headlines. There's more nuance than the back and forth or the combat that takes place. And uh, these are not easy decisions to make um, or things to govern particularly when if your product is anywhere close to a platform like social media, for example, and the rules around social media when it comes to uh, banning people and uh, yeah, just whatever rules a place like Twitter or YouTube or Spotify or Facebook or whatever uh, might have. Now, speaking of rules on Twitter, we had this, I'm going to, I'm going to finally get to the a special segment today. We have uh, an interview here that was shot just prior to us filming an exclusive interview uh, with Jack from Elon Jet. Now, we've been covering this topic on the show for much longer than I even thought because he reminded me of like a year ago when it first popped up. This is Jack Sweeney. He's been tracking Elon Musk's personal private jet for uh, a while now and his uh, his base of followers on Twitter has been exploding recently. He's been getting a lot of attention, uh, mostly around the fact that Elon himself is not a huge fan of having his jet tracked and has requested from Jack to uh, kill the account, to, to delete the account, has offered Jack $5,000, which Jack denied, and counteroffered at $50,000, at which point Elon blocked him. Mm -hmm. Now he's got, he has all kinds of insights into, uh, the, this variety of activities going on and sort of his process for creating these Twitter accounts and also his future plans and sort of his demands, I suppose. So go ahead, Will, and roll the exclusive interview with Jack Sweeney of Elon Jet. So we are lucky enough to be joined by Jack Sweeney himself. We talked about him a couple of times here on this show, and he has agreed to join us, uh, answer some questions, give us hopefully some insight into his thought process and uh, sort of how we ended up where we're at right now. Uh, a little bit of background. Jack Sweeney is uh, behind the popular Twitter account Elon Jet which, uh, by the way, props on the name. I find that to be quite a compelling, yeah. twi uh, quite a compelling Twitter handle. <laughs> uh, and uh, and yeah, so like I said, I think a lot of people are hearing about you right now. Uh, maybe you can give me a little background into how you got involved in this. Yeah, so um, you know, I've been an Elon fan since like 2018, I'd say, and you know, I just followed everything SpaceX and Tesla. And I knew he had a private jet and I had some aviation knowledge and a little bit of coding experience. Then COVID came and I had the idea for a while and then I just finally started messing around with it and started to create the Twitter bot. Yeah, that's how, that's how a lot of uh, projects were launched. COVID 
let let people sort of uh, that were intrigued with something really dive deeply into it, having a little extra time on their hands. So uh, you you weren't into programming prior to this, or uh, I was, but like you know, I only took like the basic stuff, and I only knew like you know some basic Python, and and I just started looking stuff up pretty much. Right, it's amazing what you can figure out on the internet. All yeah. right, so uh, you you happen to land. I mean, like a lot of people, you're uh, interested in Elon and Tesla and SpaceX. I mean. He has this tremendous following, specifically on Twitter, 70 million, million plus followers. There's many people who talk about and speculate and follow all the movements of Elon Musk. But you took it to another level in the sense that you were able to provide some degree of precision over his travel by making, I mean, obviously not by creating this information, but by sort of uh, formatting in such a fashion that would be easier to follow along. Yeah. So, so, so do you want to just describe, because like this is, I think, where some of the confusion I exists with some of the people who are... Uh, yeah, so all this data is like public. You know, the planes transmit with their transponders, all the information. And you, you, don't, per, you don't need, if you're just in your local area, you don't even need a website. You could just have your own equipment to do it. But, you know, if you want it across the world, you got to get data from companies that are all receiving it across the world. So I get it from an open network ADSB exchange, and uh, I get all that data and analyze it in the code I wrote, and then it posts it to Twitter. So when you say you get all that data, this is uh, not something that you have to pay for. It's just publicly available. Uh, yeah. Uh, so like originally that network, if you gave them data from your local area, you would get free access. But now I'm, they don't really do that anymore. And now I'm kind of like friends with the owners. So they just we kind of work together on certain things. Oh, I see. And, and so would yeah. that would that platform, would that be global? Are they tracking flights globally? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay, that's cool. And and you, it, you can actually go to their website if you want to see it, and you'll see like the world map. Wow, that's amazing. So they're they're yeah. they, does, does that mean that they have to have physical equipment set up globally in order to uh, receive well, so these it's, signals? It's like contributors. Like I have I have one at my house that gives them data within like a hundred miles. Oh wow! So and then there there's all kinds of people do this. You know, like have you ever heard about the Raspberry Pi? Yeah, the of course. Little computer. Absolutely. Yeah, so like all these companies. People use those, and then with a little antenna, basically. And That's it. Picks it, up and it, it acts. It behaves it as a, a receiver, reaching out and looking for these signals that are uh, being transmitted from aircraft. Yeah. Okay. So then, to what degree of precision or, or confidence can you say, "Hey, when I when something gets posted on Elon Jet, this is absolutely Elon Musk's movements or that jet's movements"? With what degree of precision? Oh, yeah, as long as it's the transponder code, which is what my program looks for, it's definitely the jet. Now, is there, isn't, isn't it possible, though, that he could uh, switch jets or that there, oh, could, yeah, that there yeah, would be yeah. many corporate jets that they would have? See, they, SpaceX actually has three, and the other two are, like, older and they're not as nice. <laughs> and from what I've seen, he, he wants to stick to the... Uh, G650ER. Nice. Yeah, I looked up photos yeah. of it uh, after I saw some of your posts. I, was, I wanted to check out the interior. You're right. It is uh, definitely yeah. a place that looks uh, kind of like a relaxing spot to travel in. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so this thing starts out. You've, you've got an interest in this. You start to pick up some steam, and you start to get a, a lot of followers and way more attention. That's how obviously how we found out about it. Yeah. And then at some point... Elon decides it's not the type of attention that he wants, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I even remember, I think you guys did a video on it, or, you know, you talked last year about it when he flew to Hawaii. That's and right. funny enough, last, last year he responded to it, and he didn't really care, but now it's big enough that he thinks it's a concern. Mm-hmm. So he reached... Yeah, so oh, go ahead. He reaches out to me when, like, I'm about to go to sleep. I see the direct message. It's like, uh, this is a security risk. Can you take it down? Mm. And 
and then we like I we talk about it, and he asks me what he should do, and like I tell him about some other blocking programs, and uh, then he offers me the five thousand if I help him to make it harder for crazy people to track him. He said, <laughs> and if I take down that count. <laughs> and uh, did he, at this point when he when he gives you when he gives first of all. Elon Musk jumping into your DMs when you're about to go to bed has got to be a pretty significant experience. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> See, <laughs> and uh, but then when he asks you to take it down, at that point, what kind of feelings are you having? Are you conflicted? Are you thinking to yourself, okay, um, maybe I should, or are you completely hardened, thinking, hey, this is uh, information that's available? It's a, it's. A- I mean, at the time, I was considering it, but. For like how much I've done with it and how much work I put into it, it's not enough to like get rid of for only five thousand. That's not like a good enough deal for me to change my life enough. And wouldn't the know? concern be then that even if you were to receive the five thousand, wouldn't the concern on uh, for, on his end be that somebody else could just do exactly what you're doing? See, I think I think. S- I think so, but I don't think anybody would like go as far as like how far the plane is blocked already, and they'd have to be pretty into it, like me, to do it now. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is you had some sort of a counter offer. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you wanted fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just if if some other uh, nineteen year old were to say, hey, that fifty grand looks pretty attractive then they may be willing to put the attention into into something because they've seen the um what what is it the precedent has taken place yeah it could be encouraging to others to just boot up a similar yeah i see that type of thing so i i i would assume that he, that he would be concerned that uh the amount of press you would get for getting the 50,000 would then act as encouragement for a bunch of other people that would yeah yeah. Go and do the same thing. Um, so have, have you had any communication with Elon after this exchange? Um, you know, so that went on for a while. And then this whole thing went on on Twitter where this other guy said he would stop posting other like travel plans that Elon was going to have. And Elon said that was uh, a security concern. And people were like, oh, Elon Jet should be taken down. And then Reporters like started asking me about stuff. So I told them about the whole Elon messages and then, you know, I think Sunday night he blocked me on all three of the accounts, the SpaceX jets, uh, Elon jet, and then my own Twitter. So this is this past Sunday, like Uh, recently. Oh, wow. And I would have to assume that that would in some way affect, um, your ability to reach people because where you you would be posting under a lot of his posts is that correct no i don't i don't like try to like do anything like it's just i don't ever tag him in anything oh okay so then then what would the effect or impact be to you of having been blocked by him uh nothing really <laughs> i mean he's just not happy <laughs> right okay so it's just an indication yeah. And probably, I guess, it's it's some degree of shutdown on the potential for correspondence directly. Like, you're not going to be DMing each other, I would assume, after this. Um, yeah. Okay, so going forward then, it seems to me that you're uh, not planning on slowing down or or stopping. Is there anything that could happen that would change your mind on that outside of $50,000? Uh, yeah, just some kind of good offer like that, pretty much. Or, you know, some kind of legal thing, but I don't think that's going to happen. It's public data. Right. Is that something you've looked into, the legality of this? Is there any way um, that you could so be liable? The the uh, police department actually contacted me today, and they were like, has anybody been harassing you? They were just wondering, and they were like, I don't. they don't see any way that I could get in trouble for any of this. Would that be the local police department? Or... Federal. Uh, my university police. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, have you gotten? Have you personally had any um, offers to turn this into anything else? Like, do you have a place that you envision taking this? I know it's uh, grown recently in in yeah, number I mean, of like followers. It would be cool to create like a website where 
people could also get notifications and I could put like ads on the website or something uh or like subscriptions. now do you um do you feel any personal sense of responsibility when it does come to Elon's privacy or when it does come to potential risks associated with publishing this information? Yeah, a certain amount, but you know, you go when you're like flying like a private jet, um, you're going right from the jet to like you're walking right down into the car. He has a security team and the car gets there ahead of time and all that. So like I don't feel like there's that much risk. Hmm. Uh, and then, okay, and then the most recent development, and I think we talked about this last episode, uh, the most recent development is that you are now also interested in tracking plenty of other billionaires' travel activities and their jets, similar to Elon Jet. But you and I talking prior to filming this, you gave me a little bit of uh, backstory there that may, you know maybe some of those articles are not exactly accurate. Yeah, no. So, like, if you go on my Twitter list that shows all my accounts and you go look at those accounts, it'll show when those accounts were created. And that was at least, like, four months or more ago that I created all those. Right. So it's a thing that you've been yeah. doing for a while now. It just so happens that the, the Elon one is uh, the most popular, I suppose. Yeah. So what are, what are some, who are some of the other billionaire jets that you have accounts for? You know, uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, Bill Gates, uh, Trump. <laughs> um, I think those are like most of the top priority, priority like highest ones. The uh, yeah. the other thing. I, there's more. I also have a Discord where stuff gets more detailed. Like it also sends information to Discord, and in the Discord, it, you know, there's more people, and. Uh, besides just like the landing and takeoff information, it also will show like the autopilot settings and what the pilot puts in. Whoa. Yeah. Cause all that gets transmitted too. Uh, there's, um, there was a post that you put recently on your Twitter account about some unusual patterns or flight paths that you had seen, uh, where it wasn't, it would look almost like a test flight or something like something was being tested out. Yeah, so I mean, uh, the one on Elon Jet, right? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, so that was the second time that happened. And it looked, it's pretty weird. Like, it wasn't someone like just t test flying. Like, and I've seen, they have also been like fi filing from what I've seen flight plans that were like completely just fake. <laughs> and they're not even like following so like before he got this blocking program last week they they were you know they're flying to hawthorne or from austin and it's like saying like philadelphia or something but they've stopped doing that but they keep putting fake ones in that they aren't actually doing wow so you think that this is something that you have personally caused for them to go through this oh, process yeah, yeah, of attempting yeah. to spoof their whereabouts. Yeah. Wow. It's all uh, it's all very interesting. I mean, if listen, if yeah. the if the information is available and I, I there's probably a whole bigger conversation ab around whether it should or shouldn't be. It's a, it's an uncommon thing because there's only so many people that own private jets and there's only yeah. so many people with enormous followings that own private jets. And um, so it's it's kind of, um, it's a little bit strange in that sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, it, it makes him uncomfortable to a certain degree. You're sitting there saying, well, there's no reason why I can't do this. You're looking for a better offer. What is your uh, optimal, um, uh, well, what mean, is your any, optimal outcome any, here? Anything I asked for already, and then I take it down. And here's the funny thing. I think Elon is really trying to get it down. But, you know, like you said, I don't think he wants to do it himself. And I got some offers from other people. And I think he's trying to go through other people or friends. Oh. Yeah. So that it happens quietly and that you don't disclose the actual amount. So it doesn't encourage other yeah. copycats to do the same thing. Yeah. Very interesting times. Well, uh... Listen, thank you so much 
for jumping on here. I mean, the best yeah, it's obviously uh, the best way to learn about things is to talk directly to the people involved whenever possible. So that's qu uh, quite an opportunity for us. We'll be following along. I'm sure this will not be the last clip on the subject. Maybe, yeah, ma not. maybe you can even come back on here if anything develops and uh, we can, we can get an okay. update on, on the happenings. Yeah. So thanks again. Yeah, no problem. And we're back. There we go. What a, what a crazy, <laughs> what a crazy situation that all is. Not, um, it's just such a new kind of problem or such a new kind such a 2022 situation yeah social media and i was talking to him like is this doxing is it not really it's not his house and then he's a billionaire and people don't tend to have sympathy for billionaires and mm -hmm. um just a just a wild and developing story as of right now it looks like there's no rules being broken i'm curious if at some point it shifts from like the legal uh space and but just into Twitter yeah, and how Twitter feels about it. But anyway, moving on to the next one. Oh, and by the way, if we have any updates or what, we're definitely going to have him back mm -hmm. if anything else develops. Uh, moving on, there's been, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about this at this point, but there's been this uh, trucker protest going on in Ottawa. Freedom Convoy. Freedom Convoy, that's right. <laughs> Here in lovely maple syrup land, place we call home. The home of Tim Hortons trucker convoy. They're uh, still in Ottawa, mm -hmm. and they're uh, uh, they have their set of demands. They want the restrictions lifted, and uh, there there's been I don't know if it's been back and forth, but Trudeau has has uh, doesn't sound too receptive mm -hmm. to their um, communication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not listening at all. Anyway, so now it looks like the thing's getting beefed up a little bit. We have this development in the Ottawa Citizen. Plans underway for farm tractor convoy from Alexandria to Ottawa. So you got the trucks, you got the truck convoy in Ottawa mm -hmm. at Parliament. That's where the decisions get made for the country. Right. And But you know what you're missing is you're missing some tractors. Because tractors, they say, like farmers... And tractors, that's work right there. That's feeding. That's yeah. a that's a that's different so symbol. Slow. Yeah, they go hand in hand in That's hand. a symbol, Will. Yeah. The tractor is food, cultivation. Uh they feed cities. The farm. <laughs> is that the bump? That's the bumper the sticker. sticker. Yeah, farmers feed cities. So it's like a perfect combination. You're right. It's gonna be slow to get there. And cold. Yeah. Although those some of these tractors these days look pretty sweet, you know. You look at the cabin in there; it's probably mm -hmm. well, maybe a decent climate on the inside. I don't know, but slow, yes. And uh, so they're gonna and and they're gonna come in and they're big too. So I presume they can clog up the streets, which is part of the protest. Mm -hmm. Make it a little bit uncomfortable in around there. It um, would be hard to get there because I haven't seen a tractor on like a highway. They gotta take the side roads. Well, if it's enough of them. In the convoy, right? I guess they're just, you're, you're yeah. gonna you're behind them. Yeah, you have to find a way around. Or uh, uh, tractor convoy to Ottawa, originating in North Glengarry Village of Alexandria, is being organized for Saturday, February fifth. I don't even know exactly where that is. Will we're gonna need to bring up Google Maps? Farmer in the Green Valley area of south south of Alexandria estimated that it's likely one hundred tractors or more will participate. <laughs> Just what they need in Ottawa right now. A hundred more tractors. Wow. Tra what else can we convoy at this point? You got the, uh, well, definitely not Alexandria, Egypt. <laughs> I don't know if it's Ontario. It, okay. My baby, that's it right there. Yeah, that looks like it. Can we zoom out and just roughly place that in our mind somewhere? Oh, but do boy. it slowly. It's in Maybe the we middle can get of it. nowhere, as far as I can tell. St. Lawrence River. Oh, okay. So not too far from Ottawa. Oh, yeah. Okay. They can do the. I think they can do the trip. Mo. Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm heading. I'm heading kind of out that way. Oh, not yeah. for not for a convoy. I got a hockey tournament, and I'm not going over there. And it's not me. It's the kids. But 
I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna be behind some tractors. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I need a little bit more time. Uh, no, I I think I, I should be okay. Uh, but yes, it's uh, really turning into something. This whole thing. You you. What else? What other vehicles can we add here? You have the the trucks, the big trucks. You have now the tractors. What are we missing here? Um, RVs. RVs. RV convoy. Those are big. Mm-hmm. The Those van lifers joint. Van, van life lifers. convoy. <laughs> They're gonna Tr- Trudeau's gonna be feeling all this pressure in there. He's saying yeah. they got the van lifers too. Yeah. I thought I had the van lifers. <laughs> the snowmobile crew shows yeah, up. Yeah, no. Some uh, ATVs, um, motorcycles. Oh yeah. They're, they're they loud. don't take up as much space, but yeah. They're they're the loud ones. Interesting. Anyway, what do they say? Go back up. Let's get a quote from uh, some of these vaccinated or not vaccinated. We are all the same. We're all Canadians, and the segregation has got to stop. The division that you're seeing now, I hate that. People are divided. It's affecting my family now, and enough is enough. We've reached our limit, and we're going to be in a world of hurt. If restrictions and mandates keep going, just look at the cost of groceries and gas. People will be hurting for years if this keeps going. So that's one of the farmers that's going to be mm. uh, jumping on the tractor and heading to Ottawa, I guess, on Saturday. Wow, that's soon. Yeah. All right, let's head into some uh, Twitter news here. Okay, this is this is the president of Brazil? <clears throat> is he the president of Brazil? Or prime minister? What are they... What's the... Uh, he's the head honcho? Well, he's definitely the head honcho. President. Presidente. President. Presidente da República Federativa do Brasil. Brasil. Exactly. You don't... You don't hey, wow, man. Wow, 7.2 million followers? Well, he's the president. Oh. A lot of people in Brazil. Wait. I have that... to become president then. <laughs> Get <laughs> all these the followers here? Sure. You're, well, I hate to break to you, man. You guys speak what? Portuguese first if oh, you're going to okay. become president of... <laughs> Uh, Brazil, but uh, anyway, this is Bolsonaro, and this is not something anybody expected, but it was one of the hottest tweets today on the entire network, actually. 25,000 retweets, uh, 2,473 quote tweets, and 145,000 likes at the time that we uh, found it. Here's what he says. This is the president of Brazil. I'm not sure what Joe Rogan thinks about me or about my government, but it doesn't matter. If freedom of speech means anything, it means that people should be free to say what they think, no matter if they agree or disagree with us. Stand your ground. Hugs from Brazil. Thumbs up. Emoji. So I believe that means that Rogan is now endorsed by the president of Brazil, more or less. Mm. Even if he doesn't like him, he says, I don't care what he thinks about my government. Mm. Uh, He's a big freedom of speech guy, apparently. Also hot on Twitter... We have uh, Mr. Beast, who put this tweet out there uh, up to 177,000 likes, almost as many as the president of Brazil on his tweet. Yeah. Would you rather have $10 million or 10 million subscribers on YouTube? Now, this generated a lot of activity around uh, from YouTubers yeah. specifically and general public trying to figure out which is the better deal. Uh, I figured we could do this game ourselves mo is it 10 million subscribers or 10 million dollars oh wow this is Uh, not as not as easy i think i'm just gonna go with the money you take the money and run you're not worried about about 10 million subscribers seems so stressful right i have to this comment the comment you just made is in yeah the thread a lot a lot of people not original have, have said no no i didn't mean it like that i meant it's probably the reaction of most it's, yeah would say what do i gotta do i gotta please 10 million people now and give them uh now granted i think the reason one of the reasons that's so daunting is that 10 million dollars can just go in your bank account and mm-hmm. you can talk about it not talk about it yeah what whatever uh it's a so it can be a private endeavor 10 million subscribers can't it's mega public. Exactly. Yeah. You're like you're you're right on in front of a ton of people, and there's expectations that come with that. And then you got a a private jet tracker on you. And- <laughs> no, I don't think it's to that extent right away, but it's definitely closer to that than just having the 10 million. But the argument on the other side is 
that with the 10 million subscribers, you could generate more than $10 million eventually if you right. embrace it. Now, you I, could also turn 10 million into 50 million. The, the, reason, the reason that this uh, question is a bit complicated is because 10 million uh, dollars can happen instantly. I mean, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. there is, there's like a lottery that exists, I guess. Mm -hmm. you could, mm -hmm. That can happen. But 10 million subscribers takes time, typically. If you're to so look in these comments of any of these YouTubers that have 10 million subscribers, it happened a little at a time. It wasn't all at once. Mm -hmm. If you came now to a person with zero subscribers, you say you have 10 million, it doesn't work though. You have a time to adjust. Right. All at once is daunting, I think, for anyone. Yeah. Anyway, the, so the argument on the other side is that you can turn the subs into any business you want and because you've got all these followers and viewers, you're still taking the 10 million cash. I'm, I'm taking the 10 million. 10 million cash. cash. Will, you want to weigh in? Definitely the cash. Take the I cash as well. I can't 10 million what people. Is, what does Daily Dose say? Take the money, people. That money allows you to immediately retire, never work again, travel the world, and help those you want to help. It's true. I think for some people, though, it... Uh, it just having 10 million, figuring out, I think figuring out what you want to do on a daily basis can become challenging. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a different type of problem. I think most people would rather have that have problem. That problem than, mm -hmm. yeah. Let me see what I want to do today. What about you? But, but, but see, a lot of people, when it comes to meaning, they derive meaning from their work. Right? <laughs> most like... <laughs> <laughs> I get most nothing like, out of this. Like, who, who are those people? <laughs> uh, you know the challenge of like building things and and yeah, absolutely. failing and improving and and not to say that you couldn't take your ten million dollars and do some passion project and whatever else. Like you can turn that into work too if you want. Uh, I agree that I think for most people, probably the ten million bucks is um, the better move. Uh, for me, I'll go with the subscribers because I have experience with it. Like right, I know how that goes. I do wish that there was a poll here, that he made it with a poll that people can vote. Oh, yeah. But the $10 million would crush. You think so? Well, Mark has, you see what he says? He says, could you create $10 million with 10 million subscribers or create 10 million subscribers with $10 million? Mm -hmm. Do you understand what he's saying there? Yeah. Hypothetically, yeah. which is easier to do? Because in the case of, say, Mr. Beast, for example, he spends a lot of money on his videos to attract a lot of viewers. Well, he's a great example. How much does he spend per video? I don't know what it is now. But I heard it's in the millions, right? Uh, maybe not every video, but it's but definitely videos, happened. Yeah. yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's, but it's, he's it's, a one in it, a million. Like, there's no way you're replicating one in ten million. One in ten. No, but but you don't think Mo that with ten million dollars that you could create content that would get views no uh, yeah of course you can but i'm just saying consistently it, it and there's more, more to it okay yeah, it seems more challenging yeah there's there i agree with you there is more to it. it's not just a money hose you can't just pour money in and no uh, and always you have to have some degree of expertise and learning and a, a talented team and sure yeah will smiling because he likes this one this is uh, arnold schwarzenegger is making all kinds of uh, moves here, unexpected moves. This yeah. is a BMW commercial. And uh, look, this has like 3 million views in a day on Instagram. I haven't watched it yet. I've just seen what you've seen. I've seen this uh, <laughs> That's enough. square and I love it already. I mean, the beard and the hair. and I, I like this person. The uh, bar barista. Yeah. I mean, Very like, appropriate with this coffee shop. I love it. I love the pastries. It, it all looks great. And the caption says, so you can pronounce macchiato, but not Zeus. And then there's a couple of lightning bolts. It's an ad for BMW's electric campaign. Uh, let's go ahead and play the clip. 30 seconds. I got a macchiato for a <laughs> Zeus. 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 It's Zeus. Whoa. Kind of like the Greek god of lightning. It's exactly like that. He looks good. Still, he looks like a Zeus. Still got it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. There you go. <laughs> keeps you guessing, keeps you wondering. Uh, Arnold. I actually like his delivery. He still got it. Actually, yeah. the whole production very, very uh, well executed. Had me believing. I, I was in the 
the cafe myself, the intensity level on Arnold there, mm. man. Dude, he didn't blink. Man, it was the full, he brought the full thunder. <laughs> you guys feel or like, light. you guys feel like, <laughs> you guys feel like uh, Arnold is overrated or underrated? Because this moment. As right, what? As what? A person just, or actor? No, or actor, what? actor. I'm a person. It's different. I definitely I think he's uh, underrated. Underrated as an actor. Yeah. This this moment right here, this 30 second clip, I was like, hmm, you know what? I wish he did more, more stuff. stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Because, like, I'm just picturing him right now as uh, some mythological or superhero. Like, uh, Zeus? Or a villain. A villain would be okay. cool. <laughs> no, I just, you know. He doesn't. He can, do, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Arnold. Politics, do, bodybuilding. Do whatever acting, you want. You but uh, I'm loving the delivery right there. Absolutely. Ken Jong and Robin Thicke. Reportedly walk off stage after Rudy Giuliani is unveiled on the Masked Singer. Oh, why? Th that's quite a statement. Like, yeah, they're shocked or pissed. I presume they're not into it. Both judges reportedly left the stage in protest of the former New York City mayor, but later returned. <laughs> They squash they, the beef. No, they get into the back, and then uh, their agents are like, you know, you you can walk, but you realize you're forfeiting the entire paycheck. They're like, we're like, all right, right, yeah, yeah. Like, we'll be back. <laughs> they're like, all right, uh, Just rushing back. Like about on that stage. Uh, Rudy Giuliani thing. No, I never watched this show, but I presume it's a, it's all kinds of surprises. It's the whole concept. You got the mask on. They don't know who it is. Yes. Uh, I don't think we have a clip of this because it was during the taping. So during last week's taping taping of the Fox series. Uh, season seven premiere, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani was unmasked as one of the contestants. Following the reveal, Ken Jong 52 and Thick 44 both walked off the stage in protest of Donald Trump's former attorney. According to the outlets, fellow judges Jenny McCarthy and Nicole Scherzinger reportedly remained on stage after the reveal where they briefly chatted with Giuliani. I mean, that's kind of a tough one. It's it's tough for a political figure to go on a masked singer, isn't it? Because people have such strong feelings about political figures. Mm -hmm. And then the show is kind of just supposed to be a bit of fun. Mm -hmm. So, but the walking off, I don't... Uh, I, maybe it's good for content. Like, I wouldn't have been talking about this show. Now I kind of want to tune in to see it. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to watch how it all goes down as they march off. I don't know if they'll be able to use it. I presume they'll use it to their advantage. Giuliani at this point is 77 years old. He's had a number of controversies. I remember when, who was it? It was uh, T -Pain? Borat. Borat, was Borat went at him. Borat yeah. went at him. Oh, okay. In that segment where he was trying to get him in a compromising position. Remember that? <laughs> yeah compromising position it wouldn't that be the <laughs> isn't that the way to describe sure, it yeah. well yes so anyway i guess these uh these guys aren't really into him and they walked off and then they walked back and it's all content and maybe it was all planned so they can promote this yeah, seventh so. season premiere who knows we don't you'll so. never know oh this one was a bit rough susan sarandon uh i, I don't know if you guys have followed this story it's been a big story the last couple of days uh, a couple couple police officers in New York were shot recently, killed. And there have been uh, some uh, gigantic gatherings for the funerals. It almost looks unreal. Some of the photos. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a, a movie. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right there, Will. It, but this is what happens, right? Like it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a tight knit group. The police officer community mm -hmm. they 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 uh have each other's backs obviously and when uh, somebody is killed in the line of duty they they can all obviously relate to the risk factors of the job and and kind of uh um i i think it's hard not to think that hey that could have been me mm -hmm. you know it could have been me that didn't go home to my family or whatever it is right mm -hmm. and so they come out in droves in support of those that, that have passed. And then many people have had uh, different types of takes on this. 
in, in kind of uh, unexpected ways of, of uh, referencing it, including this one right here from Susan Sarandon. She put a post, I think it was on Instagram, uh, and it said something along the lines of, oh, uh, here we go. I guess we'll found it here. So if all these cops weren't needed for crime, all caps, that day, doesn't that mean they aren't needed any day? So her her take or angle here is that if all the cops are at this uh, funeral, that they're useless, okay. which, which is a really weird, <laughs> it's a weird take. I don't know. It, the trouble with social media is you can't tell if it's a joke that maybe just is a little bit early or insensitive or if it's like you can't tell the tone that it's delivered in. It's one of the troubles with social media. Mm -hmm. It could just, it, I mean, it's, a, it's kind of a. And this is not just like a character tweet. This is like a graphic. Like someone put effort into making this caption. Well, I mean, it was a slide from her Instagram story. So she typed on top of the screenshot. Okay. But, but still, she made it. Yeah, it's, you know, it's effort, it's, it's effort it's, that went into it. Um, listen, I. It's kind of a, if it's, even if it's, if it's a joke, it's kind of missed, at least for me. Mm -hmm. And if it's not a joke, then it's uh, just kind of a weird interpretation of the situation. And, yeah, and the reason that they're, that that's going on. And you could, like, you could just imagine one of them reading it or, I don't know, somebody close to a loved one or whatever. It's just like, that's not really the point of what they're doing there today. They're to show solidarity for people who uh, most of the time, it's also, it's an actress saying it mm -hmm. and nothing against actresses, but, and I'm not an actor, but I'm in front of the camera and, and, uh, <laughs> am I comparing myself to Susan Sarandon right now? <laughs> I'm just trying to say that like, uh, it's not the same risk factors on a daily basis mm -hmm. that a police officer would have as risk factors. It's a different job, and therefore the show of solidarity is a reflection of the fact that it's a much different job. Uh, so I get it. And obviously there were still plenty of police officers on that were out working that day. They weren't completely shut down, even though there were a lot of them mm -hmm. in New York. On a lighter note... How about these hockey uniforms for Team China for the Winter Olympics? That is a flashy uniform. My goodness, with the dragons on the pads? That's pretty cool. That's really cool. I I don't know that I've ever seen such a flashy look before. Uh, I can just imagine the embroidery or whatever, the stitching on the pads here to get that done. I'm curious about the bounce with the rebound off the dragon. I'm a little curious. I never, I never saw that. I played a fair amount of hockey. I haven't. I don't know if anyone in the NHL is doing it. I don't yeah. know if it's painted or stitched or or how it's there. But it looks stitched. It does look stitched. It looks so detailed. But either way, it is. Yeah, I think it is stitched on the front. That's, I mean, looks cool. No, <laughs> it looks very cool. I wonder how. Do you think it would impact the shooter? You're coming down. Yeah, that's and menacing. Like, you yeah. look up and it's two dragons and gold and red. I, I mean, wonder what the helmet looks like. The helmet would be a cool one to see. It's not part of this particular image. Mm. Uh, the jersey, also very red, very vibrant. Uh, I'm curious. We start to think about the effects or impacts of uh, uniform decisions on actual gameplay. It could be uh, good or bad. Like I wonder about this type of thing, Will. I've played games where I would feel that one particular uniform would have an advantage over another. Like mm -hmm. as far as looking up and seeing who to pass to, there's a thing about wearing white. Like there's always a white team wearing a white jersey, but then the ice is also white. And then guys also get crazy about the color of tape that they use. So you mm. can see the puck better if you have white tape. Oh, right. But the goalie can see it coming off the tape better. Like oh, the release compared to a black tape. tape, which is more deceptive. Yeah. Hiding the puck. It's all very interesting stuff, but mm. uh, the uniform's cool. I'll look forward to seeing it in cool. action. Uh, here's a shocking video. Uh, this was uh, blowing up a little bit on Facebook, actually. This is a cyclist 
that gets uh, a hit in a hit and run situation. Uh, there's a $5,000 reward for any information on this driver in the Silver Lake area. Um, I believe we're talking about like near Los Angeles, right? Hmm. Uh, the bicyclist is seen getting dragged by the moving car with his bike trailing behind. You can play the clip here, 18 seconds. So here he is. He's uh, in the road. He's got a big bag on. Oh. And Ooh. He gets smashed, dragged uh-huh. a little bit. I mean, he walks away, which it could have gone. It could have been a lot worse if you had another car in this lane over here. Holy! Mm-hmm. If you, if you, lucky. it's unlucky, but lucky. Right. Well, unlucky at first, and then now, what do you think? Do you think that the driver uh, is looking at their phone or something? What do you think happened there? Uh, they, 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 or they, they mean to do so it? Did he cut them he off can. earlier? Like, what happened here? Go ahead. Well, what happened here? It doesn't look intentional. But but he doesn't make an effort to slow down at all. What do you mean? Yeah, you're right. I think he hits the brakes only after the impact. And then my other thing is, if you hit the brakes after the impact, then it means you're probably surprised by the impact, which means That's to me you're I probably think. not looking at the road. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think you're right there. Because if he was pissed at him and wanted to clip him, <laughs> which I'm not suggesting such a thing, but I'm saying it's possible that that's another possibility you have to consider, but then would you hit the brakes at the point of impact like he did? Probably not. And the guy's leg almost gets under that front tire. Uh-huh. Yikes. His bike is trash. Super close. So this is... So gross that he just drives away after. Very nasty, and uh, he does drive away. So hit and run scenario. So I guess if you have any information, there's a $5,000 reward, you know, the vehicle or... The individual, I, so I presume there might be some marks on the car too, mm. right? There would be some scratches, mm-hmm. potentially dents, mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of paint on that car. If yeah. you know that model and you see something suspicious. Uh, yeah. Last one. Last one. Okay. Okay, first things first on this one. I have to ask you guys, have you ever heard this term before? Blurst. B-L-U-R-S-E-D. No. Mm-mm. No and no, double no. Okay. I can't believe I made it to this point in my life and I didn't know the term either. This is a popular um, uh, Reddit. It's r slash blurst images. Now I'll explain. Okay. What blurst means? There's 2.3 million people. Trapped. People here. It says trapped. That's right. There's 2.3 million people trapped. A blurst image is an image that is both blessed and cursed at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) And this is this entire, like when I learned about, I didn't learn about it through this image. It was actually a separate image, which I don't know where it went at this point, but it was a separate image of an old man who was gaming like a really legendary world takeover game on a giant monitor just a few inches from it. But it's this weird emotion you have when you see the image where you don't know how to feel. It's a very confusing <laughs> feeling. Yeah, it's like I agree. <laughs> an image, it feels special, but there's something wrong about it, right? And this is an example. And they have all kinds of rules over here. But, Sh- shout out to Blurst Images on Reddit. It's, uh, it's, it, you can't have too much text and there's rules, right? Nothing not safe for work. It's like not really well defined. But they have a definition of how they, they oh, do. Really? They, okay. they do. They do. They have a definition. You can go. Just go to the actual uh, subreddit. Yeah, go there. And uh, we can just scroll a little bit. Or maybe, are you already on it? You're already on it. Yeah. Yeah, just scroll. Just start scrolling. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So videos and GIFs recently got banned nine days ago. I guess they're not properly blurred. Should I go for top? Well, yeah. No, no. Go right here. It's okay. Blurst party. Here's another one. Right? It's definitely cursed. I don't know if this is blessed. Blessed meaning like this is really funny. It, I think, like it, it's I think it means it's good it's and bad. It's good and bad at the same time. It's this kind of conflict within the image. The dog's having fun. <laughs> Keep going. We'll do a couple more. Blur's truck. Hmm. Can we agree I on that? I don't see how this is Moonwalk? cursed though. Well, it's definitely blessed. It looks cool. I would say it's there's something cursed about the angle, maybe 
Like, I mean, it's obviously uh, Michael Jackson there. He's going to be lying when when the when the bed of the truck is flat, he's just lying face down. Yeah. <laughs> it's but kind right of now, weird, right? Like, uh, from yeah. that music video. Andy but anyway, it's something is weird. You're having a weird feeling. <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be bad for our audio listeners blurst technique which is a lego technic and it was meant to be a motorcycle but this individual had built a uh, wheelchair out of it instead and taken a photo and it's definitely blurst that one is definitely it makes you it's not the way it was intended here's a meme I uh, see the memes don't work as well. I think I think they're right in the fact that the you know the truly blurst thing is just an image. Yeah, it's just an image. <laughs> it's a, this one's great. It's a blurst pool. It's a blurst pool, and I do feel really oh, blurst dog. Yeah. Well, listen, it's uh, it's endless. This thing. And some are better than others. You can definitely sort it by the... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's the expiry date <laughs> printed oh on it's the printed on. <laughs> actual pudding or yogurt or whatever it is. Yeah, there's some uh, there's some good ones. And you're going to have a blast heading over there. So shout out to that subreddit and uh, the concept. I don't know. Sometimes I think this show is sort of blurst both blessed and cursed at the same time depending on which story we happen to be covering from mm -hmm. story to story you never know what you're going to get there were a couple yesterday that for sure were cursed just straight up cursed yeah uh today some of these might be blessed some of them were cursed too never know what you're going to get that's our mission that's our job we just try to break down whatever's going on on the internet you know, we spent some time together. Shout out to everybody who joined here today. Everybody in the chat. Uh, we truly appreciate the community here. We're invested. We're going to remain invested in this community. We're going to buy We're going to buy stocks in this community. Mm. Right here. We're going to the moon. I'm going to buy all the NFTs in this community. Oh yeah. I'm going to buy all the I'm going to stake all the cryptos in this community right mm -hmm. here. So tell your friends it ain't over. It's never over. Except for tomorrow. Because yes. I'm out of town. But Monday. Monday. We're back and it's going to be bigger than ever. And as usual. Catch the clips in the meantime. Hit the clips channel. And uh, get up to date. There's so much stuff over there. Big Mo. Big Will been working on. There's something for everyone. Go get blurst. <laughs>